Hi guys, how are you doing? This is me from TechCentury and welcome to my new video in this series, What to Buy. So today I want to talk to you guys about what's the best purchasing decision, the Retina MacBook Pro 13 inch or the MacBook Air 13 inch. So let's get started after the intro. Now, before we actually get started with this comparison, I'm not gonna base my information that you'll see in this video just on the information that you'll find on the Apple website or just the specs of the machines, because that's just something that you can go on the internet yourself and I don't have to make a video about that. But just to explain my background, I've owned the 11 and 13 inch MacBook Air before, also the 13 and 15 inch regular MacBook Pro, and I'm currently an owner of the 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro. And also my girlfriend was in the market to purchase actually her first MacBook ever, and I recommended the MacBook Air to her. So I've currently have both of the machines in this comparison in the household, and that's also where you'll see the footage from. So let's get started with this comparison to find out which is the better purchase for you. Now to actually start off this comparison, I want to start off with the pros of the Retina MacBook Pro 13 inch. Now of course the biggest advantage is pretty obvious and that's the screen. It's a 25 16 x 1600 resolution on this display and it's also an IPS display. Now IPS basically means that you have a great viewing angles and also a great color accuracy. And overall, it's just a fantastic display that just looks gorgeous, no doubt about that. And especially if you have the MacBook Air side by side to the Retina MacBook Pro, then you really notice the difference, not only in just the pixel density, but also just in the color reproduction and of course the viewing angles. So the display is of course a big pro of the Retina MacBook Pro. Another pro is also the processor. So while we find ultra low voltage processors in the MacBook Air, we actually get the full fledged laptop processors from Intel and the Haswell generation. So we'll find a 2.4 gigahertz Intel Core i5 dual core chip that can actually turbo boost up to 2.9 gigahertz. So overall, you'll just find a lot more powerful processor in the Retina MacBook Pro. And if performance is something that you need, for example, for video editing or photo editing, then the Retina MacBook Pro's processor is definitely a big advantage. Now, another pro of the Retina MacBook Pro is actually the port, and that's something that you might overlook if you just look at the machine online or in the store, but the Retina MacBook Pro actually has a dedicated HDMI out, so you can very easily, without any adapters required, connect the machine, for example, to your TV or also just to a monitor, and that's definitely not so easy if you just use the MacBook Air because it doesn't have an HDMI out whatsoever. Now, in addition to the HDMI port, we'll actually also find dual Thunderbolt outs on the Retina MacBook Pro. And for once, that's great because you're just very future proof due to the Thunderbolt technology and the fast transfer speeds. But also, this means that you can actually connect up to two external displays to the Retina MacBook Pro. Now, a couple of years ago, when the Retina MacBook Pros were actually first launched, it was possible to connect three displays using the HDMI out plus the dual Thunderbolts but currently it's only possible to connect two displays, but that's still one more display than you can actually connect to the MacBook Air. But now let's actually start talking about the cons of the Retina MacBook Pro, and the first one is pretty obvious, and that's the weight. So it weighs 1.57 kilograms, and the MacBook Air just weighs 1.35 kilograms. So there's definitely a noticeable difference, but then again, for laptop, both machines are very light, and they shouldn't be too heavy to carry around whatsoever. Now the second con is actually not that obvious and that's the screen. Now you might be wondering, well you just praised the screen on the Retina MacBook Pro in the Pros. How can you have a con now? And that's basically that you'll find a glass layer on top of the Retina display. Now that means that while Apple was able to reduce the glare, it still has more glare than for example the MacBook Air. So in the direct comparison, you'll find more glare on the display of the Retina MacBook Pro and that's definitely a con for me. Now, last but not least, there's a very important con for the Retina MacBook Pro, and that's the battery life. So the battery life after the Haswell upgrade actually got up to nine hours on the Retina MacBook Pro, which is an insane battery life for a laptop, no doubt about that. But especially in comparison to the MacBook Air, which gets 12 hours, there's a noticeable difference. And if you just need the battery life and just the best battery life you can get, then the Retina MacBook Pro is definitely not your first choice, but the MacBook Airs. But now let's actually start talking about the MacBook Air and of course we start off with the pros. Now the first one is pretty obvious and that's the portability. With the weight of 1.35 kilograms as well as also the thin profile, there's basically no better machine to just carry around with you, especially for example if you're on a plane a lot or just in places where the space is limited, then the MacBook Air is just the perfect choice. 
Now the next pro is actually something that we already mentioned in the cons of the Retina MacBook Pro and that's just the insane battery life of 12 hours on the MacBook Air. Now this is for the 13 inch version and of course a big thanks goes out to Intel for actually making the Haswell processors so energy efficient but to just find a battery life of 12 hours on such a small machine is just pretty insane. And also if you just travel a lot or for example if you go to university where you can't just always like plug in your laptop then the MacBook Air is the perfect choice and you won't find another laptop with such great battery life. So that's definitely the best choice if you need the ultra portability in terms of battery life and weight. Now the next pro is definitely the price. So the MacBook Air 13 inch starts at $1,099 and the Retina MacBook Pro at $1,299. So there's a difference of $200. So if you're on a budget, then the MacBook Air is definitely the way to go just because it's cheaper. Now the last pro is probably something that you didn't think of and that's the typing angle. Now I've used a lot of MacBooks in the past and I haven't come across any other machine that's as comfortable to type on as the MacBook Air whether it's on your lap or also on the desk. And that's basically because the MacBook Air is the only machine in the Mac lineup which actually is very slim at the front and just get thicker towards the back. So you just have a very nice way and angle to just rest your wrist and just to type. So I'll just try to really show you what I mean in the B-roll footage but it's just a very nice experience and just way better than for example on the Retina MacBook Pro or also just on the regular MacBook Pro. But now let's actually talk about the cons of the MacBook Air and first of all it's definitely the processor. We just find an ultra low voltage processor from the Haswell generation from Intel that's clocked at 1.3 GHz. Yes it can turbo boost up to 2.6 GHz but still in comparison to the Retina MacBook Pro's processor it just can't compete and it's slower but of course that's also the reason why it gets better battery life. Now the next con for the MacBook Air is the display and that's pretty obvious because we just find resolution of 1440 x 900 which is okay but not that great and also we just have a cheap TN panel so the viewing angles aren't as good and also just the color reproduction can compete with the Retina MacBook Pro so a big con for the MacBook Air right there. Now the last con for the MacBook Air is actually the fact that you can only connect one external display to the machine. Now for a lot of people including my girlfriend that's absolutely fine, they don't need more than one display but if you just want to use the machine as an all-in-one solution for example to just use it in university then just get back home, connect two displays then that's not possible with the MacBook Air and then you'll definitely have to opt for the Retina MacBook Pro. So these are also all my points and we'll get to the end of this video. I hope that you found some information in this video to actually make the right decision for you. If you have any specific questions or if you just have a specific use case, for example you want the perfect machine for university or for work, then just leave it down in the comment section below and I'm very glad to just help you guys out. Also. I would definitely recommend to upgrade actually either machine to 8 gigabytes of RAM because one of the big disadvantages of both machines is that they aren't user upgradable. So once you've actually purchased them in the store or online you can't upgrade the RAM anymore and I would definitely recommend to get at least 8 gigabytes of RAM just to be future proof and to just have a machine that can also last a couple of years and I think that would just be a huge bottleneck if you would just get the version with 4 gigabytes. And that's also the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please make sure to like the video if it helped you out or also subscribe to the channel for more videos of this kind as well as a lot more tech content. I'm SB from Tech Century. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.